Hey everyone, I made these loops recently and people were wondering how I did it. And they're actually not that hard to make, so stick around if you want to find out how. So here we are in Blender 2.83. Um, the only thing I have in my scene right now is a camera parented to an empty. So if you want to follow along exactly, you can do that, but it's not necessary. So first thing I'm going to do is add in a plane. I'm going to scale this up by 10. So now this should be uh, 20 by 20. And I'm just going to apply the scale, tab into edit mode, and subdivide. I'm going to subdivide this by 49, so we should have 50 squares going in either direction. Tab back into object mode, and we're going to go into the modifiers to add a wave modifier. So if you press play, this is what it looks like by default. And if we go back to the beginning, you can see that there are no waves on the edges. That's where this offset comes in right here. We can just... Uh, put negative 250 and so now the waves should start at frame negative 250 like that so that way when it starts we already have some waves going and basically the settings I'm trying to look for for this are as few waves as possible while still maintaining a seamless loop and to make sure that things are seamless I like to change my timeline settings to start on zero instead of one then I hold shift and the left and right arrows to check the first and the last frame and I want these two to be the same. So when I know that these are the same and I'm ready to render, then I just turn this to one. That way we don't have two duplicate frames back to back. So I'm gonna set this to zero until the very end. So I want as few waves as possible. And to do that, I'm going to turn the width up to five. And basically width spaces the waves apart and turning narrowness down will make the waves closer together. Basically there won't be any flat space right here if we set this to 0.5 like that. And I'm just going to turn the height up to two. If you want for some reason to turn this up higher than two, it doesn't let you if you're scrolling like this, but you can actually type in bigger numbers. But for this one, I'm just going to leave it at two. So basically what I'm looking for is to make the speed as slow as possible while still maintaining a perfect loop. And I know just from messing around that if we have 200 frames over here and I set this to point two, that it gives us a perfect loop. And we can just check the first and the last frames, and we see that they're the same. We are getting more than one in here, so one thing I like to do is uh, just count how many waves there are, and then divide this by how many waves I count. Let's start counting. There's one wave, two waves, three, four, and it ends on five. So I know that if I divide this by five, we'll only have one wave here as you can see, and it should loop perfectly. So I'm just going to turn this back to one now that I know it loops. And so now that this is looping, I'm going to add in our second modifier, which is a simple deform. And if you hover over this selection field and hold down control and scroll, that'll uh, just shift through those automatically. And I'm going to set that to Z and I'm going to turn the angle up to uh, 360. Now I am going to set our camera up to just be looking straight down on this. So I'm going to reset that and then rotate on the Y by negative 90. So if we look through the camera, this should be looking straight down on it now. And so next I'm going to show you how to make all those little floating points. So to do that, we add in an icosphere and you can set that to two subdivisions. That should be fine because these are going to be pretty small. With that still selected, I'm going to shift click our plane and press control P to parent it. And then with our plane selected still, I'm going to go over here to object properties and scroll down to instancing and hit verts. So now there should be an icosphere on every vertice of the plane. And it looks like the icospheres are a little big. So just select your icosphere and you can scale it down to however small you want it. And if you don't want to see your plane, um, you can just turn off display and render instancer. And so now we're only seeing our points. And I want these to glow, so I'm going to work on shading next. So go up to your shading tab over here. For this one, we're going to be using Eevee. Just go into our render view over here. Make sure that your icosphere is selected and add a new material. And for this one, we, we don't have any lights. We're just going to have an emission shader. So I'm just going to add an emission shader in and hook that up. And now all of these are white and we can turn that up to make it brighter. And I want to have a little color variation. So I'm going to add in an object info node. And if we plug the random into the color over here, that'll give us a random value between zero and one for every instance of the icosphere that we have. And to make that colorful, we can just plug that into a color ramp and change the colors of these flags in here. So 
I'm going to make this a little different than in the example that I showed you. I'm going to make these blue and green like that. And then you can just mess with the strength until you get a result that you like. And it looks like our points are a little too big, so I'm just going to make sure that our icosphere is selected and scale that down until it's about as big as I want it. And that's pretty much it for the shading. So now that we're done with that, I'm just going to go back into layout. So I'm just going to look through our camera and go back into render view and just take a look at this. And so this is already a pretty cool result, but we can actually get a lot of different uh, results from messing with these modifiers over here on the plane. For instance, if you start locking these two, you start getting some very different results. Um, or if you mess with these checkboxes here, you get different results also. This is set to 360 right now, but if we set it to 180, it'll rotate a little slower. And we also have options uh, to change the type of deformation too. So you can get a lot of cool results from just messing around with this. So for instance, if you turn this to stretch, and if you mess with this factor right here, you can get a result like I had in one of my other loops that I showed in the beginning. So the only other thing that I didn't show you is how to get motion blur. And that's actually something that's only available in the 2.9 alpha. So I'm just going to show you how to do that really quick, because if you go into motion blur here, this won't work because motion blur in 2.83 and anything before, uh, for Eevee anyway, only works with uh, camera motion. So this won't give you any kind of motion blur. And I have this blender launcher here. I'll put a, a link to that in the description if you want to check that out. So now that we're in 2.9 with that same file, you just want to go over to render properties over here and click uh, motion blur. And you only actually see the motion blur when you start rendering stuff. So I'll show you without the motion blur, and then I'll show, show it to you with the motion blur. So here it is without motion blur rendered. And I'm just going to go to slot 2 so we can compare them. I'm going to turn the motion blur on. I'm going to turn the shutter up to 1. So this, this is measured in frames right here. So 1 should technically be the maximum. And if you try to render it out as a video, uh, it'll only let you turn this up to 1. But if you are doing a photo, instead just one frame you can actually type in here a bigger number to get a more crazy um, motion blur but for this one because it's a video I'm gonna leave it uh, I'm gonna leave it at one for now and also because this is 2.9 it might crash on you so you can see we're getting some some streaking now here and if we compare the first and the second you can see that like these ones over here are not moving fast but these ones in the middle are so we're getting more streaks and if we turn this up much higher, I'll turn this up to 10. So now this is looking 10 frames away to see the position of all of these points and stuff. And we can see that's streaking like much more now. And if you get any glitches or anything like this uh, and you want it to be more accurate, the way you would do that is to turn steps up. This will increase render time a little, but if I set this to like 16, for instance, we can see over here that it's much more accurate now. So yeah, that's how you get motion blur too. And that's all there is to it. The technique I showed is a good example of how you can make something visually appealing without too much work. It doesn't always have to be that complicated. So yeah, if you like this, please consider subscribing. Leave a comment if you have a question or suggestion. And if you want to see more of my work, you can check me out on Instagram. Uh, I have a link in the description. Thanks for watching. See ya.